Hi. It's good. Hi. Hey. Hi, my name is Molly Walsh. Hi, I'm Becca Peasy. Hi, I'm Jim Self. And this is my golden hour. 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 Pipes need a little work. It also needs a little work, this new setup. Okay? I'm going to be honest with you guys. I was downstairs at the cribbo. Then Bob the Builder and his gang came out back, just started smashing stuff with the hammer. I was in a flow. I was vibing. I was moving. But uh, had to transition upstairs into this tiny, tiny little podcast setup. We're still going to get it done because we don't miss a week. Look back. Look back through the Rolodex. We have not missed a week. We will not miss a week. Now listen, before I begin today's solo episode, a couple things I want to say as I pull the Quasimodo here like the Hunchback of Notre Dame. 90% of the time on camera, I'm all jokes. I'd say about 90% of the time behind the camera, I'm pretty serious. And... I know a lot of times I just kind of nonchalantly ask you guys to share this with your friends, but the only way this podcast grows is with your help. Real talk. That's how a show works. You got the host, you got that content, you got that entertainment, and then you got the audience. Without the audience, there's no show. It's just me talking to the camera. And so if you guys get any sort of value from the episode, and I mean it, any sort of value, just like really think when you listen to these episodes. If you learn something, you're entertained, you take something away from it, just share it with a friend, man. That's all I ask, for real, when it comes to the podcast. When we start getting those big sponsorship bucks, you're probably going to be kind of pissed because the first like, two minutes of these podcasts are going to have advertisements, but we don't advertise right now. Just share it with a friend, man. That's all I ask. Really want to grow. Um, I want to produce great stuff out of Boston. I want to create impactful events. I want to host the biggest and the best podcast, which I think we're doing. And I want to make movies, man. I want to be in movies. And the only way I can get these stuff done is with your help. I want to give more to the people, man. But help me help you help me. You feel me. Okay, that's a little disclaimer. So what's up, everybody? It's Big Handsome. You know, I got that Lucky Charms flow on deck today. I'm looking real rustic. And you guys see a little caterpillar on my lip, don't you? Come on, man. With that being said, man, solo episodes, not always my favorite. But today we're talking about an extremely exciting topic. And I've been really pumped recently that people have gravitated towards all of my training so much. I've been a fitness psycho for a long time, but I was just never very open about my training. I just didn't really think people would give a fuck, being honest. And, um, you know, when quarantine hit, I started working out every day starting on March 13th. So I'm coming up on a year. So I've taken my fitness to another level and uh, it's interesting, never much of an athlete, but then you get to this stage, at least in my life, where you can be branded as the term athlete and it's exciting because I was never much of an athlete, but now all of my athletic accomplishments are predicated on my own hard work, which is super fulfilling, super, super fulfilling. And uh, I'm a psycho, so that's how we're rocking. And uh, it's been a lot of fun. With that being said, man, when you, I got my notes here. Today we're going to talk about my marathon prep. We're dropping this on Tuesday, February 23rd. So when you're listening to this, I'm 12 days out from my marathon, and I'm in the, in the middle of my taper week. Your taper week is when you taper your training volume down. For those who don't know about marathon and marathon training. 
So I'm currently, as we're recording this, in my peak week. So I'm having my heaviest training volume this week. I have a 23-mile run on Sunday. I had an 8.5 yesterday. I have another speed workout later this week. And I have two or three cross training sessions this week. So actually, I have two. I have three. So I have six workouts this week. And um, my marathon is the Louisiana Marathon on March 7th, 2021. So coming up fast, man. Pretty crazy. So when you're listening, your taper week means you're decreasing your training volume. So my... I'm going to run this week roughly anywhere from 35 to 40 miles. When you're listening to this, I'm going to be bumping down to anywhere about 20 to 25 miles. And again, if you want very in-depth information about my training, go follow the Instagram page I started for all the training. I document every single workout and I give splits and breakdowns of everything at Bochi Bolt. We actually started that page as a joke because I was so slow five, six months ago, but, uh, When you show up for every workout, man, start getting fast. No bully. So with that being said, let's talk about why I run. I got a different brain than most people, and I'm okay with that. I started running on Tuesday, June 16th, 2020, because I wanted to do something to keep me disciplined to make our movie. I always had an excuse, and you guys can go back through the content, and it probably comes across that way in a couple different episodes, but I always had an excuse why I wasn't going to do the movie, why I couldn't do it. I wasn't a good writer. I didn't have the resources. Now wasn't the right time. Um, You know, I didn't have the money to do it. These were all resource. These were all excuses that I constantly played to myself. And I realized like, yo, I got to toughen the fuck up. Real talk. I got to get harder, man. No bullshit. I, I want to be in this game for a long time. And I got to toughen the fuck up. And so I got to sack up. And I got to do something that is going to keep me super disciplined in making this movie. So I got to do something ver- harder every day than the movie. So growing up, I hated running. Hated it. I was always slow, unathletic. I would always cramp like in my ribs, my abdominals. And um, when I started training, I hated it too. But I realized if I just showed up every day for running, I would show up every day for the movie and I would get the movie done. And it did happen. There is an extreme correlation between producing the film and my my, uh, fitness over the past year. Started working out every single day, got the movie done, grew the podcast like crazy. There's a, an extreme correlation there, undeniably. And I'll probably work out every single day for the rest of my life. That's an insane statement to say, but it's probably true, honestly. And uh, I'm just a fitness psycho. I love it. And I figured if I just I kept it hard every day, no matter what, I'd move the needle on the movie. And that's just what we locked in on and it worked. Also, I want to say one thing about running that many people might not understand. So I'm very hyperactive. I have a very hyperactive brain. Um, Really insanely hard for me to meditate. I've never been able to just like sit back and chill and like close my eyes for 15 minutes and meditate and breathe. And, And it's insanely hard for me, like very hard. And I think running is the next closest thing to meditation for someone with a hyperactive brain. Because when you start getting in the groove of longer distances, you realize you can kind of just zone everything out. So it's the closest thing to meditation for me, for real. Now, sorry, just going through my notes here. Okay, cool. So again, June 12th, I started running and I was always young swole, always cared about physique and just looking hot. That was the crucifix program. Look hot. You know what I'm saying? And what happens when you adjust to endurance training is your physique takes a toll because 
it's much harder to retain muscle and you have to adjust your calories like crazy. So what I realized was, yo, if I'm going to do this post movie, my physique is going to take a little bit of a toll. That's just the name of the game. So it's something you kind of got to get over transitioning from a, a functional lifter to an endurance athlete. The most awesome thing about this type of training for anybody who wants to get into it is there's really no ceiling to the training because it's very mental. And, um, you know, you can feel pretty stagnant in the weight room pretty easily. Like, okay, I'm going to do five reps at 225 bench this week. And next week I'm going to do six and then, you know, I'll get up to eight and I'll just bump up my weight. It's boring. You know, this endurance training, becoming an endurance athlete is much different. It's like you're constantly adapting your training, adjusting your training, figuring out ways to go longer distances, shorter distances, improve your aerobic capacity, stretching, functionality. It's just there's it's way less restrictive than your traditional lifter, you know, and there's nothing. I still love going in the gym and lifting heavy. I do. But that's just the truth about endurance training. So anybody who's looking to get into it, just understand it's much different. You're not going to have the physique goals, at least initially. I'm going to be obviously honing in on it this summer, but you're not going to have the the same physique standards you once had. And uh, it, there's really no ceiling to it. So for instance, we can talk about it like pre lifting pre-running pre-cardio I was 170 pounds 170 super lean three percent body fat and then I transitioned when I started endurance training to 190.5 pounds and 6.8 percent body fat my cat my daily caloric intake went from about 2800 to anywhere from 3800 to 4000 a day now so at least 1,000, 1,200 more calories per day. I used to be about 40% protein intake. Now I'm about 50% carbohydrate intake, probably about 25% protein intake. And you can eat way more flexibly on this. But again, super ripped, looking hot, looking like a machine to physique still popping. Looking like a house, though. You know what I'm saying? Looking like a like like a brolic Irish version of the Hulk. Looking like looking like that Sandman and Spider Man. You know what I'm saying? That dude who just punches with the sand fists, but dude's built. That's what I was looking. Like. Not nah, that's what I am looking like now before I was looking kind of like a phantom bottle you know what I'm saying sometimes man I just you know just come up with shit anyway so that was an adjustment and I hated running for the first three months excuse me I'm gonna say two and a half months for the first two and a half months it was just a matter of showing up every single day show up every single day no matter what terrible super hot ran every day concrete and quincy awful two miles three miles four miles out of breath every single time literally hated it so much better because of it though and now i'm looking in my life for certain areas of discomfort like that because when you just fucking put your head down and shark attack that you get better and you grow a ton i mean that that's at least in my experience I also want to make one more disclaimer, and this is an aside to all the marathon training. Whenever I do these solo episodes and I give advice, don't really take my advice. I don't think you should take anyone else's advice besides your own and your own experience or people you trust. This is just what worked for me and what works for me and how my stuff went. Use it, take it with a grain of salt, but you know, ultimately the only way you're going to grow yourself is if you figure it out yourself, just the truth. So with that being said, hated it the first two and a half months. Then one day in October, I think it was October, October 12th, 
I had done some six miles. I did an eight mile, 10 mile. I did a 14 at one point. And then on October 12th, I just went out and I sent it for a marathon in a monsoon in Quincy. Just, I'm a little different, built a, built a little mentally different. And, uh, it was terrible, but it was one of the most gratifying experiences of my life. I mean, it, it was just imagine going out, improving to yourself one day, like you can do something you never thought you could do just cause you just put your head down and just zoned everything out and just did it opened up my mind like crazy that day. Really. It was an incredible experience. Left it all out there. Had nothing left in the tank. I was bodied for four or five days after. But I realized, wow, that was an experience. That was a mental and physical journey. That was awesome. So then we finished the movie and I'm like, all right, I gotta put I gotta pen a date for this training. We gotta let's do an official marathon. And the marathon took me so long, it must be five hours. Um, let's get a date. So November 1st, excuse me, October 31st, excuse me, October 30th, I signed up for the Little Rock Marathon. All COVID has been shutting all these things down. November 1st, training camp starts. I'll tell you guys a funny story real quick. Some of you guys know it already about why I chose Little Rock. So I'm looking at four marathons and i'm with my friend who's blitzed off the blizzy aka he's high as hell he's i'm looking at these marathons and i got one pulled up for napa valley napa valley marathon in california st petersburg marathon in st petersburg florida one in myrtle beach south carolina and the one in little rock arkansas and my friend has no idea what i'm looking at on the computer right he's just high as hell and i'm like yo dude if you were to spend a weekend in one of these places, where would you want to spend a weekend? And he was like, and 99% of people would say Napa Valley, California, St. Petersburg, Florida, um, Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. He was like, yo, bro, I'm going to be honest with you. See, I would really love to spend some time in Little Rock. I was like, bro, what the fuck? Are you dead ass? So, sign up for Little Rock. Little Rock was eventually canceled because of COVID, but there aren't many marathons that are still popping. You know what I'm saying? So November 1st, training camp starts, and I'm all pumped. Training camp, let's go. We're talking about the treachery of my training camp now. November 10th, already overtrained, sprained MCL slash terrible runner's knee. November 10th, nine days into the training. And I mean, I barely could walk, icing my knee, it was in a track workout. I was like, yo, I'm just going to run through it. This is what happens with early runners. You get injuries. No, like I literally could barely walk. Terrible. And it's one of the worst feelings of all time getting a run, running injury, especially when you love it or some sort of endurance injury because you feel like a kid that can't play in the sandbox. You know what I'm saying? You feel like you want to just get out there and go do shit, but you can't. It was very tough. Like, it was very demoralizing. And that put me out for about four weeks. So, there was a blessing in that, though, because on November 14th, when I realized I couldn't run, I started cross-training. So, I jumped into the pool for the first time. And I, and still I'm not 100% solid, but I started swimming. I did half Ironman swim, Ironman swim took me so long but it was a new skill I was picking up which was sweet and so for like those four weeks there I was just all I could do cardio wise was swim three four times a week maybe hit a stationary bike here and there but it's just not the same it's not then I'm in Turkey in December I have this mythical run through this Game of Thrones forest which changed my life it was unbelievable My knee wasn't fully functional, but I could still run. I ran like six miles in like over an hour, and uh, it was an incredible experience. And so my knee was kind of back on the 3rd of December. Then for the next two weeks, I'm just kind of rehabbing my knee, feeling it out, feeling it out. And then come mid-December, I'm back in the swing of things. Training camp's going well, right? Building up my mileage, 
building up my speed a little bit. I'm doing like a little half marathon here, you know, a little 14, 15 over here. Then, boom, Christmas Eve. Quick Starbucks sip. Christmas Eve. I catch the Covey. Caught that Covey. December 24th, caught that Covey. Pumping through my veins, caught that Covey. And I was like, yo, I'm going to just sack up. I'm going to run every day. Lungs took an insane hit. They'd be lying to you if they said they didn't. When I had the COVID, lungs took an insane hit. Like, I was running, you know, 14, 15, 16, and then out of nowhere, having trouble huffing and puffing out of a three-mile, four-mile run. But I ran every day of COVID. First nine, ten days of COVID, ran every day. And just lungs were taking a hit, man. And I was like, Ugh, that's two L's in a row. We had the busted knee. We caught the COVID. Like, that's two more weeks off of the training. So I had like already six non-functional weeks off of the training, right? And so I kind of bust out of COVID right after New Year's. And if you've been following along on Instagram, you guys have been seeing I've been doing my long runs every single Sunday on the Charles. And um, I've been running through ridiculous weather. Just that's what we signed up for, right? Head down. That's what we signed up for. And um, so the weather's been insane, freezing cold, snowstorm, whatever. But I'm making progress now, right? This is January, February. And then last Sunday... I'm hauling ass on the Charles. PR run easy. I'm at a nine mile split. Feet down. Daggering into the pavement. Split splat. Pop. And I believe they're stress fractures. Maybe just sprains. But both my index toes and both feet. Just I felt a crack. And I believe I have two stress fractures in my toes. And, um, you know, it's not unbearable, but it just goes to show it's just another wrench in the training, man. It's been treacherous. So let's rewind. Busted knee. COVID. Terrible weather. Stress fracture in the toes. And now we're approaching Little Rock in a couple weeks. So, it's been insane. Now... I feel like a good way to wrap this up. I would love, if you guys are into this stuff, I would love to give you guys a deep nutritional breakdown, fitness breakdown. Again, in the meantime, go over to the Bochy Bolt page. But I, I just want to put this out there. I understand it's super motivating um, because for me personally, when I see people doing this, it inspires me following someone's training. So that's kind of what we're doing here. If you guys want like following along, maybe it helps you get off your ass, go run a little bit, maybe learn some stuff about nutrition, fitness. Great. That's the goal with this. And I just want to manifest and put it out into the universe what my goals are for the Little Rock Marathon. So, excuse me, Baton Rouge, Louisiana Marathon in Baton Rouge. So June 16th, Riley, we're going to pull up a a clip right here, uh, an image I send you. June 16th, I ran 2.02 miles in 18 minutes and 20 seconds. October 12th, I ran the 26.39 miles in 4 hours, 52 minutes and 2 seconds. That's an 11.06 mile pace. My goal now, 9 months after I started running, 5 months after the bet after my first marathon I ran on my own, is to run the Baton Rouge Marathon in under three hours and 45 minutes, which is an eight minute and 35 second mile pace, which is one hour and seven minutes faster. Given my training over the past two weeks, I feel like I'm pretty close. I'm, I'm teetering the line. I'm right, I'm right there. It could go either way. Goals definitely achievable, definitely attainable, but... 
it's I'm going to have to come out and perform like crazy. Now let's talk about a little bit of race strategy. So now you guys know I want to run sub three hours, 45 minutes. So I'm only going to be happy if it's three hours, 44 minutes and 59 seconds. It can't be three hours, 45 flat. It's got to be three hours, 45, 59, 59. You feel me? So here's some strategy. So I had a 15 mile long run last Sunday, which I was telling about splitting my feet and I, I came out too hot. I was kind of gassed around five miles. So what I'm planning on doing is what happens in a marathon is inevitably your mile time teeters because your body wears down. So I want to come out early and develop an eight minute and 25 minute pace, which is comfortable for me. Like I can sustain that pretty easily. You know, I've been going out doing about like eight minute pace, eight, 15 minute pace with the past couple of weeks and all my runs. So I want to come out with that eight twenty five pace through about miles one through six Then I want to kind of ease into an eight fifteen pace from six to a half to the half marathon point, which is 13.1 miles. And I'm going to try to sustain that eight fifteen pace for as long as I can. You hit an inevitable wall. I'm going to be consuming G1M Sport, which is my endurance drink from Bear Performance Nutrition. If you guys have seen Nick Bear, he's this, uh, this big YouTuber who runs a supplement company. They have an endurance drink, which is 80 grams of carbohydrates, which pretty much pushes off that inevitable wall where your legs are just killing you and you run out of any sort of energy in your legs or your body. This is what the drink does, just pushes that off a little bit. So I'm going to be consuming that, which is 80 grams of carbs at mile 8, mile 16, and mile 21. So the big goal is you want to just perform at your race pace, which you want to perform at for as long as you can before you hit that wall because that wall is going to come and then it's just sheer will. So I'm going to go out. I'm going to try to sustain that 8.15 pace from six miles to at least the half point and then hopefully up to at least around 17 or 18 miles, that 8.15. So I'm assuming what's going to happen is if I, again, that first quadrant, we're doing an 8.25 pace, one miles one through six, miles six through 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 8.15. That's going to buy me a little bit of time because inevitably my performance is going to teeter in those later miles. So that that's the goal. You know, once I hit the wall, it gives me more room to run like an 840 mile or an 850 mile in there somewhere. But I cannot go over an 850 mile at that point. I always have to be sub nine minutes. So, you know, again, I'm assuming there's going to be a lot of adrenaline on the day of. Hoping I sleep well, I perform well. But, uh. Again, the great thing about a marathon is that you got to show up on the day. It's like a Super Bowl. You get one chance. I mean, obviously, I can run more other races after this, but you get one chance at the Louisiana Marathon 2021. So it's all about how I perform on the day. Again, I've had long runs where I've been going out on Sundays. One week, I'm running an 810 pace for 18 miles. The next week, I ran uh, 22.4 miles at an 850 pace. So it's, there's so many variables involved on the day of now I'm definitely, this is a quick disclaimer. I'm going to be running in that new GDP fit Komodo cause I got those coming in, which are essentially incredible athletic shirts that we're making. Jack designed them. They're awesome. They're going to be on our website pretty soon. I'm picking them up this Friday. So by the time you listen to this, hit me up, I have them in my car. They're in a box in the back of my car. Now, that's what's going on. That's where I'm at in my training. Today, I have a functional leg lift with a core emphasis. And again, it sounds so crazy. So crazy. But all this is just to make the movie. We're going to have our third draft of our movie in pretty soon. Um, working on the next one. Want this movie to change my life, man. I think it will. I just got to make sure enough people see it. The product is is the best product I've ever created, I think. Um, but I'll let you guys decide. It's up to you guys. And uh, it's all love, man.
Baton Rouge, March 7th. Movie. TBD. The Dirty 30, if you're listening this far in advance. The Dirty 30 is coming soon. You guys will know what that is pretty soon. And uh, again, guys, thank you so much for listening. If you want to hit me up, talk about fitness, talk about your whatever you guys are doing for training, I'd love to hear it, man. And uh, it's all love. Riley, thank you so much for editing this. We don't miss weeks. And next week, this is going to drop after we run the live version, but we're actually running a... We'll be releasing an episode with the director of the Boston Marathon, Dave McGill, McGillivray. I gotta get that right, McGill McGillivray. So that'll be pretty fun. We got some other fun lined, fun episodes lined up coming up. I'll love my brethren. I'll love.